Hey guys, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. It's time to do our Huge Hap series again with number 13. And this is just a short series, getting a little longer now, about specific LEGO pieces. So looking at how those pieces interact in the system, but kind of taking a focus on the single piece. So as you can see, uh, the selection for this video of Huge Hap is this um, kind of gable compound roof slope piece. This is number 3049, and there's actually been a couple of variations over the years. Um, on Bricklink, this is denoted by the C variation. So let's just jump on to Bricklink real quick and inspect that. And uh, right after that, I'm also going to show some pictures of some of the ways that I've used this piece. So here we go, uh, 3049C, and Bricklink says there are 16 known colors for this piece. So let's pop this out real quick, and I'm just going to sort by a number of sets. So we can see probably the most common um, colors you're going to find are black and white. They're not really surprising there. And then at the bottom, some of the rarer colors will be our sand blue, medium blue, um, green, dark purple, blue. Sets where um, maybe this piece was just used as kind of uh, decoration or for a specific purpose and maybe not used in context of an actual building roof. So that's kind of where we would expect to see that. Uh, and then uh, the rest of these kind of sprinkled in between that range, still under 50 sets for the most common one. So really this piece does have kind of a specific focus uh, being used in roof building and architectural details, but um, not too expensive on the secondary market. It is still somewhat of a common piece and people aren't going to really be buying these in bulk unless they need them for uh, a roof project. And that's kind of what I want to mention. Um, on that side of things where I've used this piece really effectively is in fact in a roof this is a close-up from my Patriot Hill build and uh, here's one in use right here where I needed to transition kind of different levels of, of the peak here so this can be used to have the peak all at the same height but I used it where I have a peak down here and then the other peak is up here and there's a lot of other stuff going on with like a porch and stuff and I also used two more of them on the other side of the building above these really small gable ends. So again, one right here, one right here. Um, you don't need a lot of them when you're building roofs, but if you're putting in these gables, it really does help to tie in that little gap right there at the back. Um, so that's kind of where I've used it, but yeah, back to the pieces here at hand. I have been working on getting a collection of these in various colors. Um, the ones that I don't have yet happen to be our medium blue. So just to get a sample of the color, the dark purple and the lime green, these are the three colors that are represented here, along with our regular uh, light gray and dark gray. These are the old light gray and dark gray, and this piece has been released in the updated versions of those colors as well. So um, I think that covers all 16. Is that right? I've got three rows here. Uh, yeah. So let's take this green one off really quick here and just get a little inspection on what we can do with that. Here's an example of where this will play into the system. Um, out on the end here, you can see that the slope lines up with that ex exterior side of a double convex. And the profile does match this inside slope here. So. Um, the way that these start working when you stack multiple slopes on, I'm just going to take this, move it back here, take this off. So when you start putting multiple of these together to build your roof, there is that lip on there. Uh, depending on um, how smooth you want your roof, that can kind of be an issue or it can kind of be a feature, but as you can see, um, the peak or the ridge of this profile match is well below that line, it's actually right below. Um, so our height here being that brick height and then um, your footprint is going to be that one by two where it actually connects to the studs and then that additional triangular shape uh, hanging over. So uh, just to have enough room to play with, you want to leave the two by two footprint but then it does have this taper here. And you'll notice it doesn't reach all the way to the next piece because uh, we have to have this gap. Otherwise, this would be really pointy and Lego doesn't like 
um, having their pieces be a hazard to children. So we can't have that spike out on the end. Um, and that's kind of why this is the third variant of the piece. Some of the really early variants um, were actually too sharp. And so over the years, LEGO has changed the mold. If you look on the bottom of these now, you'll see that instead of a bar, there's uh, just kind of that stud holder formation. So that's kind of what we've got going on underneath there. Some of the other variants from the old days don't have this other wall here. They just have a tube actually that was uh, cut. These were all custom built in the early days. Think way back to uh, the 60s uh, when Samsonite was still distributing LEGO in the US. Uh, that's kind of how these pieces were introduced and eventually they got their own mold. Uh, all of these are, uh, this mold specifically with the wall and the stud holder has been in use since 2004. So that's how long we've had that. Uh, and like I said, pretty specific to roof building, but still a pretty cool piece nonetheless. And uh, I would encourage you guys to try to work this into your builds uh, architectural wise. And uh, whenever you're using gables, it does help close up all the gaps. So pretty useful there. And that is our 13Q tap. We'll see you guys in the next one.